Hey guys, I wanted to show you something that I've been working on and also this is the second part of the Raspberry Pi powered mains project and if you haven't seen the first one I'll leave the playlist in the description of this video. Anyway, I figured out a way to power the Raspberry Pi using a cheap DC to DC converter right here. You can see it's mounted right in here. We'll get a close-up of that. Anyway, 12 volts is coming in from this line here, and I'm running it into the DC to DC converter and sending it to the Raspberry Pi. So in this video, we're going to continue with our project, and we're going to focus on how I made that, and I only spent a dollar, yes, a dollar to do that. And also, I'm going to show you how to power your Raspberry Pi. This is the Model B without using the USB port. And you can see back here, there's no connection. It's actually soldered right to the board. I'm going to show you how to do that. This is the actual secret to it. And this came from the dollar store. And inside here is a DC to DC converter that I used. And that's what this is here. Anyway, let's go ahead and get on with uh, part two of the build. Let's get started. Let's take a look at this Raspberry Pi real quick. What I need to do is supply power and normally the way that you do it is 5 volts comes into this USB port here. And I really don't want to do that because if I, you know, put a USB plug on here, it's going to stick out that much, you know. And then even if I bent it there, you're talking about at least an inch. I'm going to be supplying my own power to this with a regulator that I'll talk about here in just a few minutes. Anyway, so I want to go ahead and apply power directly to the board. So I've been poking around trying to figure out where I could you know put the power into the board and on the top side of this board I can actually come in on this component on either side of it and that'll work without bypassing and then a better solution for me would be on the back and I found that um, right here on the bottom side of this if I apply my DC 5 volt plus and here would be my negative right here that way all my fuses would be intact and it would be safe to do. So I'm going to go ahead and solder a wire onto here and here and then we'll talk about how we're going to regulate that power and feed it into the 12 volt system. So let's go ahead and put my wires on. So the positive goes here and the negative goes over there. Here we go. Wish me luck. Felt good. Nice. Alright, one more here. So I was reading on the internet about other guys doing this to be sure that, you know, there wasn't any problems associated with it. And there's all kinds of solutions. Some people say to go in through the GPIO pins and use a fuse and I don't like that idea. I think it's safer to go ahead and use the existing components and just tap into them as close as I can. So that's what I decided to do. Boy, that's hot. Woo! Alright. Well, it's on there now. We'll see here in a few minutes if it's going to work. Okay, so now let's talk about how I plan to get my 5 volts. This is one of those USB chargers for the car that you plug into the cigarette lighter and then you get USB out and it's got a little light here. This I got at the dollar store actually, it was a dollar. And this is rated for 12 volts in, max 1 amp out. So that'll be just fine for this if it uh, can handle it. I thought I'd go ahead and take it apart and see what we have inside. 
I'm pretty sure that this is a DC to DC converter. It's not a regulator. So, there's a fuse. And if that is the case and the circuit looks trustworthy, I think we can use this. Most people are going to probably say, oh, why use that piece of junk on a Raspberry Pi? But keep in mind, we're not supplying a lot of power here, probably 750 milliamps at best. So, you know, I feel fairly comfortable at one amp if it's truly rated at one amp. So what I'll do is I'll try to hook it up and see how it reacts. So yeah, it's not a just a simple voltage regulator. It's actually a DC to DC converter like I s suspected. I'll look up that chip and make sure that the specifications are correct um, before I go any further with it. Let me see if I can get a number on it. Three four zero six three AP one. Three four zero six three AP one is the little eight pin package. So if that's rated for um, one amp twelve volt, we'll be in business because that'll give me almost two two amps. That looks a little bodgy there, doesn't it? I can clean that up. But my <clears throat> my thought is go ahead and bring the 12 volts, you know, in through here. This wire looks kind of wimpy. I'll replace that. Bring the 12 volts in where the spring is and then the ground. And then out comes my power here, which I'll just trim that off and hook it to my wire here that I just put on. So anyway, let me go ahead and look that up on the computer, make sure that that chip can handle it, because you never know, they could uh, fudge the ratings on the side of those. So Google's your friend for sure. I looked this chip up. I said it wrong on the video and I had trouble finding it because of it. The actual number is 34063AP1. And here it is here. It's a DC to DC converter control circuit. It operates from three to 40 volts in. It's got low standby current limiting and it's good for one and a half amp. Looks like it's adjustable, but we're just going to leave it at the 5 volts, which it should already be. Give me a little schematic. So this is going to work just fine. This will be a nice little DC to DC converter already built. That cost a dollar. So let's go ahead and hack it up a little bit and get it in our circuit and see how it runs the pie. Exciting. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and use this. I have a uh, USB cable here that... Uh, I cut up a long time ago and I've got the ends buried here and what I'm going to do is take my ohms meter continuity tester and just make sure I know my contacts here so I can see the ground right here I'm pretty sure I know what I'm dealing with this would be the ground here see if we can get some noise out of this there we go and then the positive is over here. Okay, so I spent a little time and I took all these parts off there. I removed the USB plug. You can see I had to pretty much murder it to get it off there. Because it's such a heat sink, you know, if you ever tried to get those off. Anyway, I replaced it with uh, two wires here. I left the light on there. I had it off at first, the little LED, but uh, I decided to go ahead and put it back on. I just thought it didn't hurt anything. And I bent it around and put a little heat shrink here. When I broke the USB thing off here, the plug, I cracked the board so I had to put a jumper wire here. 
and then on this side I removed the spring here's the spring that I took off there and I just uh, hooked up these two wires here so anyway this is my this is my input for my power and this is my output and I've got it hooked up to my meter here I'm on volts we'll see what happens here we go look at that 5.02 bang on wow love that so I will keep an eye on this board and I do plan to put some shrink wrap on it but I'm gonna run it for a while first I've got to hook it to the pie of course got my pie here so I'll go ahead and do that and then I'll do one more test and then I'll do like a burn-in test just to be sure this is going to be okay. And I'm going to do some voltage tests too just to be sure everything's cool. But uh, yeah, 5.02 and what I'm putting in is, let's see, I'm just using a wall wart for testing. So let's check what I'm putting in. So I'm putting in 15, 15 volts, somewhere in there. I don't have this clamp on there real good. Yeah, 15 volts. Okay, so I'll go ahead and do that. And uh, yeah, this is almost ready to call it good. So yeah, I plugged it into the pie and look at that. It's working perfect. So I'm going to let this run here on the bench for a while and I'm going to monitor with my temperature gauge the parts and make sure that uh, you know nothing's getting too hot mainly this thing and uh, so I'll keep an eye on it right now it's about 81 degrees and uh, I'll also check my wall wart which is only one amp it's not the wall word I plan to use, but uh, anyway, it'll be a good test. I'll get a kick out of that though, a dollar for that thing, for a DC to DC converter. Yep, I like it. So I hope that you like that little tip about using a DC converter. You know, you could use a linear voltage regulator, but it's not nearly as efficient as a DC to DC converter. And by the way, this came from the Dollar Tree. I didn't mention the dollar store name, but it's the Dollar Tree. And I've seen other types of these as well at other dollar stores. You just have to shop around and bust a couple open and find one that's going to work for you and make sure that it's not going to overheat and check it out make sure that it's built properly you know you got to be careful what you get for a dollar if you're going to be powering something like this anyway i hope you like that as well as the tip about how to hook up the uh, raspberry pi without using the usb so thanks for watching next week we're going to continue on the project and hopefully get it uh, to the point where we're almost finished if not so thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.